Hi and welcome to Bias Talk Studio at Medicom Village in Lund. Today we are joined by Synact Pharma CEO Jeppe Oversen and CMO Anders Dyrtoft. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Thank you. And they have recently announced uh, positive results from a phase 2A study in rheumatoid arthritis. Um, so Anders, can you tell us a bit more about these results? Yes, with pleasure. Uh, well, to start with, the results that we have out of this uh, phase 2A study called BEGIN, uh, they are absolutely the best results you can uh, dream of uh, in biotech. To start with, we, uh, we have met the primary endpoint, uh, which is uh, an a indicator of disease activity in uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, and um, there we show that our highest dose that we tested uh, reduced uh, disease activity by 15 points. And, and that is actually a lot. Um, 12 points is considered a clinically relevant reduction. So reducing by 15.5 points uh, is actually really good. Second, we show dose response. And uh, that is also important because it is a dose finding study. And we see that our highest dose uh, performs better than uh, the second highest dose uh, across all uh, measures, uh, including uh, patient fatigue, uh, physician assessment, uh, of the patient situation, etc. So uh, we have also confirmed that uh, we have dose response. Third, and that is also very important because it is a small molecule uh, that we're dealing with, our compound called AP1189 is a small molecule and you never know uh, what happens uh, when, when you give such a first-in-class compound. We see an absolutely clean safety profile uh, and that is very encouraging, in particular because uh, many of the drugs that are used to treat uh, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, they are associated with, uh, with side effects. Uh, so, so we are very encouraged uh, by the results that we have seen, both on the efficacy side and also on the safety side. And uh, Jeppe, how important are these results for the company? Well, they are very important for us going forward. Uh, and as uh, Anna said, we are very excited about the results. It's the second time that we are showing efficacy in a phase 2A study. So it is uh, very, very important and it brings us into a situation where, you know, where we can more determine our own destiny uh, with the company because it allows us to look at more strategies uh, and that is crucial for, uh, for a relatively small biotech company. And Anders, uh, what are the next development steps within this uh, indication? Well, now that we have uh, come through phase 2A, uh, we have already de started designing phase 2B. Uh, and here it is, uh, we will take the learnings from phase 2A, but we will also leverage uh, two major news pieces that we shared recently. Number one is that we have uh, three months uh, toxicology demonstrated in animal models, which means that we can uh, increase the treatment time, which is important because uh, rheumatoid arthritis is a chronic disease. So we can do phase 2B uh, with a longer treatment duration. Second thing is that we have uh, developed uh, our compound into a tablet. And we have also proven uh, that the tablet works just as well as the um, suspension uh, of the compound that was used in the begin study and in prior studies as well. So we now have a tablet and we can treat for longer and that will ob obviously both be leveraged uh, in, in phase 2b. And um, what the, we will now do is that we will uh, engage with regulators, we will do we will open what is called an, an IND uh, with the FDA, uh, take their advice on the data we have generated and take their advice uh, on our uh, phase 2B plans. So these are the next steps for our compound within rheumatoid arthritis. And how will a phase 2B study uh, be designed? Well, we need to decide upon uh, treatment uh, duration. Uh, we need to decide upon the dose. Uh, as I mentioned, we have proven dose response and we have proven that uh, our highest dose was uh, effective and also uh, with a clean safety profile. So we could consider using an even higher dose uh, in, in phase 2b. That is uh, to be decided. And uh, what can you tell us about uh, your other uh, development programs in other indications? Well, our mode of action uh, is uh, very unique uh, and uh, targets uh, immune cells called uh, macrophages and neutrophils. And uh, with this mode of action, uh, we can actually also uh, provide clinical benefit in other therapy areas. One that we are currently already have in progress is uh, nephrotic syndrome. Uh, and here we, we hope to be able to help these patients uh, by improving kidney function in these acutely sick patients. 
The other um, uh, disease area uh, that we have already generated proof of concept in. So it's actually today we're talking about the second proof of concept that we have generated. And that is virus-induced respiratory insufficiency. And you could almost guess which uh, virus I'm here talking about for now. It's obviously COVID, because we have already conducted uh, a study in COVID um, where our compound AP1189 was compared to placebo. And what we found was that people could actually uh, uh, reach what we call respiratory recovery, which means time to not needing supplementary oxygen four days earlier than placebo, and they were also discharged from hospital three days earlier than those treated with placebo. And these results uh, are also uh, some that we will leverage uh, to progress towards what is called emergency approval in relevant countries. Uh, so uh, we hope to soon provide news on that. So these are the two other uh, development programs, but um, m more is likely to come because the mode of action can likely be leveraged in other therapy areas associated with what we call hyperinflammation. Yeah, and uh, turning from research to uh, business, uh, will you continue the development uh, on your own or with a partner? Well, we have a strong focus on, uh, on, a, on a strategy where we will develop the compound ourselves uh, into a phase 2B uh, study uh, and as Anders alluded to we will seek advice from the FDA and uh, get that strategy uh, going. Uh, in parallel with that it's fair to say that we have uh, good discussions uh, with uh, big pharma companies and also big biotech companies and they are natural takers to, uh, to this project and there's no doubt that uh, with the data that we have now we will sit a lot better uh, at the table so we are definitely in an improved position. Uh, so we will uh, drive those two strategies uh, during 2022 uh, and uh, I feel very comfortable. I think we are in a really nice position. Uh, and from a combined medical and commercial point of view, how do you view the potential for AP1189 in rheumatoid arthritis? Well, the market is, uh, is, is very big. Uh, it's 30 billion US dollars. Uh, so we are looking into a huge market. Uh, we have also a situation where some of our competitors producing the JAG inhibitors, uh, they are facing uh, safety problems uh, in the market. And that, of course, creates a situation where we become even more attractive uh, with our platform and our technology. So, uh, as said before, I think we are, in a, we are in a good situation here. Interesting. And uh, thank you both for coming here today. Thank, thank you very much.